I'm joined now by Dr. Rich Carson, who is focusing on neurology at this meeting. So I want you to tell me, what are some of the challenges currently? So one of the exciting areas is the range of novel radiopharmaceuticals that are being used to look at a whole variety of disorders, neuropsychiatric disorders. But that process of taking one of those and translating that from the basic science into clinical practice is, is quite a long process. One of the parts that makes that really interesting and that is really exemplified by some of the highlights at this meeting are those studies where we're using more than one radiopharmaceutical to be able to be much more specific, to be able to distinguish one form or another of a given neurological disorder. Because often the clinical diagnosis is a challenging issue. And that's even more exciting in some of the interesting neurological disorders as we're trying to differentiate Parkinson's and multiple systems, atrophy, uh, PSP, et cetera. So I think that's where the multi-tracer imaging is going to be a very exciting area, but it is very challenging. But it does take the guesswork out, so I'm seeing there are a lot of opportunities here in Correct. the future. Correct. And, and part of that is that how we develop those nice optimized radiopharmaceuticals. And this is one where we're happy that there are a lot of sites doing this, but it's an area where we'd like to see even more growth for both the development and testing of these new radiopharmaceuticals. And how do you stimulate that? So part of that is, uh, you know, we, how, where the funding sources come from, and there's a lot of different funding sources there. Some of the basic science work comes from the, the NIH, certainly being able to do that, but also that clinical translation. And there's where we look often with the pairing of how those pharmaceuticals can be paired sometimes with the pharmaceutical industry. They've been very instrumental in helping to develop novel ligands when they want to be able to assess how their, tar how their drugs target the specific sites in the brain. And the development of a pet radio pharmaceutical is one of the best ways to be able to demonstrate the engagement of action. In the uh, morning plenary, uh, Dave Mankoff was talking about that in the cancer role. We've been doing that in the brain for probably 30 years. And it's a very exciting and important area for translation of not just the pharmaceuticals, but also the, the potent drugs. It, it seems like with the research, with the technology, there's a lot to be excited about right now. That's right. I think another part there is not just each the new versions of the radio pharmaceuticals, but a lot of specific areas that are new that have been we've been waiting for for a long time. One of the really interesting areas coming out of Yokohama City University are specific tracers for the AMPA receptors. That's one of the main subtypes of glutamates, and they're able to show a really wide range of applications in different neuropsychiatric areas, trying to differentiate depression, schizophrenia, et cetera. And this is one that's gonna see it blossoming in a wide growth. It's, it's a target that's important in these disorders, but often, again, multi-tracer is gonna be the way to be looking at that. We look at something like schizophrenia, where you may be looking at AMPA, but you'll also be looking at another tracer. You may be looking in the dopamine system, where you'll be looking in the serotonin system in, in other targets. And I think that's gonna let us both differentiate our different subpatient populations, but also help with the targeted therapies just to be able to look at progression and control of the disease. And given the mental health crisis in this country right now, it feels like this could be really transformative. Absolutely, and certainly when you look at opioid disorders, at all of the abuse in that area, looking at a lot of different interesting mechanisms that are associated, some of them very specific to those targets, but also secondary ones. Neuroinflammation is an area that transcends a lot of different d diagnostic categories there, and it's very, very relevant in, in the drug abuse disorders to see the effects of these long-term overdoses of drugs into what's happening in the brain. Yeah, and knowledge is power. Thank right. you so much. Okay, great, thanks.